What is that? It's the end of no. Welcome to my Chocolate Factory experience. Welcome back to Gavin Reads It All and also Gavin Buys It All because this is a massive book haul from January and February and the first couple of days of March. Uh, there is quite a lot to get through so we're just gonna go straight into it. It is all a little bit in uh, disarray so I don't think I'll be going like middle grade, manga, young adult, adult. Like I don't think I will be able to section this video off. It's just gonna be all random. And that chaos is exactly the way I like it. I've got four stacks. Actually, you can't really see the fourth stack. I've got one, two, three, four, right? Why don't we do a cheeky little random number generator, see which stack I should go through first? Four, number four, which I think was this one, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was this one. Firstly, I have the Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. This one was an Evernight subscription box book, which I do genuinely love the stencil edges of this. I really do like the dark colors of the cover. I am obsessed with Under the Dust Jacket also. It just looks like a really cool like spell book and things. I do hope everything's in focus. <laughs> this one is set in a world where only women know magic and men know about women performing magic, but they can't do it themselves. So they seek to eradicate the power. And there are five women dead, no trace of DNA, no trace of who the killer is. And I think it's up to a group of women to figure out the case. So this is an Evernight book, but I've been a little bit underwhelmed by the Evernight choices because they don't really feel like true horror. I thought Evernight was supposed to be a horror subscription box. And while this does look really good, I feel like it's more horror adjacent than it is actual horror. So I'm kind of a little bit on the fence with this one, but I mean, I'm sure it's good. I just don't know if it was right for that book box. Or the book box just needs to pick more horror, like actual horror. Okay, I've got a couple of middle grade here. I got sent Yesterday Crumb 3 from the publisher a couple of weeks back, and this is called Yesterday Crumb and the Tea Witch's Secret by Andy Sager. This one follows a young girl who in the first book goes to this uh, living tea shop thing that's run by a witch, and she becomes an apprentice under the switch. So thank you so much, Orion, for sending me the third book in the series. I also have Marty Midnight and the Moon Mystery by Laura Ellen Anderson, also illustrated by Laura Ellen Anderson. I love Laura Ellen Anderson so, so much. She wrote the Amelia Fang series and the Rainbow Grey series, two of my favourite children's book series ever. And this one is the debut of Laura's next big series. And this one follows a young moth called Monty Midnight who begins a, what's it called again? A mini beast academy. So don't worry if you're a little bit scared of insects. I mean, sometimes I am too. This one will make all of those insects cute and in such a cozy middle grade way. So thank you for sure for sending me a copy of this book. I'm so excited to read it. I did pick up three Puff and Cloth Bound editions. I haven't been collecting these as often as I should have. It's been a couple of years since I last picked one up, but I have been collecting them and a good few have been released since. And there are some coming out this month that are absolutely gorgeous that I'm gonna have to pick up at some point because wow. So firstly, I have Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales. I just think this is an absolutely gorgeous little addition with like some select tales that I think are probably his most popular. We also have Grimm's Fairy Tales by Jacob and Willem Grimm. So again, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous edition. Probably just like select most famous Grimm tales. And then finally, I do have Watership Down by Richard Adams. I mentioned this recently in my spring TBR video and I will definitely be reading this at some point. Uh, Watership Down. It is a traumatizing uh, film. My friend Jade actually texted me after watching my video being like, wait, that was one of your favorite films as a kid? I'm like, yes. What can I say? I love violence. No, I feel like a lot of the violence just went over my head as a kid. But now, obviously, I haven't watched it since I was a kid. So maybe if I rewatched it, it would traumatize me. But the book itself is massive for it being, I think, a children's book. It is children's, right? Kind of about the life of like animals and stuff, but it, it can get very, very dark. So yeah, I did do a little bit of thrifting and I managed to find the entire Lion Game series by Sarah Shepard. Now, Sarah Shepard is the author of Pretty Little Liars. And this is a six book series that she also did that was made into a TV show by ABC Family back in the day. It only lasted two seasons, it was cancelled, but I was a, a pretty big fan of that series too, as I was Pretty Little Liars. And I really want to read the six book series of this as a follow-up to my Pretty Little Liars vlog that I did nearly two years ago now. So The Lion Game is about twins, but I can't quite remember exactly what the plot was because I think I'm getting it confused with a TV show called Ringer, which starred Sarah Michelle Gellar. But I do believe it follows twin sisters who were separated 
and I don't think they knew about each other for a long time until they are reunited. And, you know, it, it's Pretty Little Lies adjacent, so you just know there are going to be mysteries and teen drama, so I'm actually really excited to read these. <laughs> because the first eight Pretty Little Lies books were actually really good, and I really enjoyed them. And I think this was written during that time, so I think these could also be pretty good too. So I did get Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver, and this one I picked up because uh, my friend Steph from Steph Loves was raving about it not too long ago, and there are other people who have read it and enjoyed it too, who I follow. So I'm really excited. All I knew about it was that it's like serial killer romance. I think there is some kind of blood game or... Uh, it follows two serial killers and I think they're in competition with one another and they must fall in love or something like that. <laughs> I went into Waterstones and I just knew I had to pick this up. But Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida Ibike Ayamede. This one is from the author of Ace of Spades, which I read about three years ago now and I really enjoyed that book. And this one just looks absolutely fantastic. It looks even better than Ace of Spades somehow. It does seem to have like similar vibes to Ace of Spades. We follow, I think her name's Sade or, or Sadie. She goes to this like new prestigious academy, but her roommate goes missing and Sade ends up getting the attention of the unholy trinity who are the three most popular girls at school. So if it's anything like Ace of Spades, I just think I'm going to enjoy it. And I just love the Waterstones edition. It's signed by the author. Oh. A huge thank you to the publisher for sending me Some Like a Cold by Elle McNichol. Elle McNichol is usually a middle grade writer who has written A Kind of Spark and Shows Who You Are and other books that I've loved. This is their YA debut. This one is a romance between Jasper and Arthur. Jasper, she loves old films and Arthur is an aspiring filmmaker. Apparently it's set during icy winter, it's a warm romance, and it's a story that will melt your heart. And I do love, this is the proof copy. The official copy comes out very, very soon, but this was the proof copy that they sent. And I, I kind of love the way that this looks, like an old cinema ticket. I think it looks awesome. Next I have here Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa, translated by Eric Ozawa. I love how I went into Waterstones, I had points, so I redeemed my points, got a coffee with it, and I sat in the, uh, the cafe, I posted on my Instagram stories my kind of little setup, and it was so nice and cosy, and like the first like four or five people who saw that story sent me messages saying they did not like this book, and I'm like, oh god, okay, way to ruin the mood. <laughs> I still have high hopes for it, I think it looks really, really nice, but this does does follow someone, I don't know if it's uh, autobiographical or not, but it is set in Tokyo and the main character ends up living in this bookshop from early summer to spring. So like a good chunk of their life is spent living at this bookshop and the main character like lives rent free above it. And I think it's her uncle who actually runs the bookshop. I, I, I just think it's gonna be good. I'm gonna give it a chance still, even though people said it wasn't good. I'm still gonna like it, okay? <laughs> I have every faith I will. A book I recently just read is Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. I read this for my Four Horror Novellas vlog, so if you've missed it, I'll link it down below. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it 4.5 stars. It follows a woman who accidentally cuts her finger at the memorial site of her son who had passed away, and she starts to see him and he starts to speak to her. It's very, very creepy, and I really enjoyed it. It was my favourite book of that vlog. Spoiler alert. And it's definitely made me want to check out more from this author. And the last one in the stack is a book I just picked up yesterday, and that is The Wheel of Time, The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is the first book in the Wheel of the Time series. I am planning on reading only the first book and the last book. I did actually just pick up the last book from my library because there's like no point in me buying the final book when I just know I'm not reading all the books in the middle. Like what would be the point there? So I do plan on annotating this because it is the first in the series and then reading my library copy of uh, A Memory of Light which is also co-written by Brandon Sanderson because Robert Jordan passed away while writing the series. I don't really know anything about this series, to be honest. I just know a lot of fantasy booktubers love it and it has something to do with time. And there's a wheel, apparently. But do expect that first and last Wheel of Time video in a couple of weeks. Right, we are down to three stacks now. Should we do a little bit differently? Should we do one, two, and three? Yeah, so we're gonna go uh, backwards this time. So let's generate, let's see what we're working with. One, okay, so this one, okay. <laughs> Literally, I just did the stack right next to it. And then this one, it's gonna end up being... Firstly, we have The Crimson Moth by Kristen. Kissarelli? 
Kisarelli. Kisarelli? This one came in a fairy loot box recently and it actually might be the most recent one. Very stunning, stencil ledges, which I feel like now <laughs> these two middle stacks are going to be filled with me showing you beautiful edges and beautiful books. This is set in a world where witches were powerful, they are powerful, but they were part of society. But then this revolution happened, which made witches become outcasts in this world. We follow someone called Rune, who works as a sort of vigilante and she protects other witches from injustice, essentially. This is the first in a duology, so with there only being two books, I'm more inclined to read it because I know that there's gonna be an end inside and that actually excites me. I love a very compact story. Next, my Waterstones pre-order of Empire of the Damned came by J. Kristoff. I loved Empire of the Vampire when I read it four years ago. I'm gonna have to reread the first book before I read this one because it has been a little bit too long and I've forgotten quite a lot of what happened in it. But yes, the Waterstones edition does just have red edges and is signed by the author. I remember there was a character called Gabriel, I think he was the main character, and he was telling his story to this other vampire and there was like a lot of blood. It was very dark and grim and grisly and that's what I loved about it. I was like, this is the kind of vampire story I want, but other than that, <laughs> I can't remember. I remember there being a group of characters and I really enjoyed the characters. Other than that, I've really, really forgotten. I know I'm terrible. I'm ashamed to call myself a booktuber. I do have the Waterstones edition of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris. I still have not read this book and I still want to because of how hyped it has been. And if you've watched Katie's video from Kate Coulson and her video doing the um, most recommended books that were on booktube in 2023, that whole amazing video, which I will also link down below. Fourth Wing, spoiler alert, came first. Like so many people put in their best books of 2023. I don't know or think I'm gonna actually love this one, but the Waterstones edition did become available and I'm a sucker for a special edition. And in the words of Mamma Mia, how could I resist you? And all I know about is dragons. Dragon Riders, dragons, something like that. Next one, I have The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. This was another fairy tale book. Gorgeous, gorgeous girl. But I'm a little bit hesitant to read this one now after some mixed reviews after Polathon, which happened last month. I know Jade did enjoy this one, but both Steph and Beth, Steph and Beth, that was almost very hard to say. They both didn't like it. I think either both of them or one of them DNF'd it. I'm actually not 100% sure. To be honest, the plot of this does sound like a lot of other plots of books that I've read before or I already own about somebody's mother going missing from this tormentor who has been terrorizing them for years. It was like some kind of curse and the main character going on a mission to save her mother. That has happened a lot in not just young adult fantasy, but in middle grade fantasy, adult fantasy, it's a recurring motif. So I'm still hoping that maybe the world and the atmosphere of this will be so unique that it will stand out from the rest. So I'm not like in a rush to read this just yet, but it is still one that I have my eye on and one that I will still keep even if it's like five years from now and I still haven't read it. Okay, another fairy loot book is A Fragile Enchantment by Alison Saft. This is very, very nice. I've never heard of this one before until it came in my fairy loot subscription. This one in a way sounds a little bit like The Handmakers by Tamsin Merchant, but make it either young adult or adult. I actually don't know which one this uh, is categorized as because we follow a dressmaker called Neve, which is the same name as my niece. So I do really like that. And she is tasked with doing the um like the the fabric and the clothes for the prince and she is able to sort of like weave in emotions and stuff into the 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 weaving which does remind me of the hat makers where in the hat makers they can make hats and gloves and other things like that and each of the items have like magical properties that people can wear and it like changes something about them or stuff like that so it sounds a little bit like that and I'm I, it, it sounds good it sounds very good you know what I think oh shit you know what I think this might be one of my favorite stencil edges I've ever seen in my life. I'm not even kidding. And that is To Cage a God by Elizabeth May. Oh, it looks like a stained glass window. Like that is absolutely divine. Divine. This is a Luma crate. Oh, it even says on that To Cage a God is divine, to be divine is to rule, to rule is to destroy. But like this itself is divine. So there are a couple of siblings, I think sisters, who have been made into gods. Like they, like the bones of the gods have been like, I don't even know, to be honest, it's kind of confusing. Okay, grafted gods into their bones. Bound to brutal deities and granted forbidden power no commoner has held in a millennia, the sisters have been raised as living weapons. There is 
a rebellion. So again, like the plot of this doesn't really sound all that unique, but there are other elements to this that do sound pretty awesome. Like I love the idea of them becoming like gods or like having gods grounded into them kind of thing and giving them forbidden powers. Like that sounds really awesome. So I can only but try. Oh, another one that's absolutely stunning. A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. This one is fairy loot. And I do love the way that they've done the whole cover, the side of it. It's a very like Norse mythology. This one follows Freya and she has a drop of goddess blood in her veins, which allows her to stand out from the rest. But I think she has to like keep that a secret for a long time. And her husband betrays her. She has to have this like fight to the death. And yeah, I think that there might be a rebellion because it seems like that's the running theme in a lot of these books. But I know my friend Steph really loved this book. And I think I have read a book by Danielle L. Jensen before. I think it had something to do with a ship. So, and I don't remember liking that book all that much. So I'm gonna give this one a try. And it has been a long time since I last read a Daniel L. Jensen book, so who knows, maybe I'm talking out my arse. Okay, these only came a few days ago. I had pre-ordered them in December from Illumicrate. And that is the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Ryden. These were on pre-order with Illumicrate in December when I did my Percy Jackson vlog. And I pre-ordered it during that vlog. I filmed my whole thing doing that. It was so much fun. But yeah, I absolutely adore these editions so, so much. Some of the most beautiful books I have ever owned. And I love the Sensible Edges being a sort of map because that's just like so beautiful. It's like, it's so middle grade. I would categorize it as, and it really fits. I just, oh, it's just so beautiful. I'll just show you like one of them up close and personal, but this is like the Lightning Thief. But I think these look even better without the dust jackets. So this is how it looks there. I just, I love the, the spine so much. I don't know if you can really say it very well, but I just love the spine so much. Running out of space though. <laughs> Another big thank you to the publisher Puffin for sending me The Troublemakers by Tamsin Merchant. This is what I was talking about with uh, Fragile Enchantment. This is the third book in the Hatmaker series and it does follow a young girl who is trying to find her father. And in this world it's like Victorian-esque, there is magic and there is magic woven into the hats that the Hatmakers make and we follow Cordelia Hatmaker. And it's just like one big grand adventure. I love it so much. But yeah, this is the series that I was talking about before. And Puffin sent me this in an amazing chest. I open it in my Slice of Life vlog from the end of January. So do check it out if you want to see like the actual package. But I'm very excited to read this one. I've read the first two and I love them. And finally from that stack is An Ordinary by Uru Chan. Tracy, thank you so much for sending me this one. I had never heard of it before. But I believe this one is a graphic novel that is set in a high school where people have magical powers or like some kind of superhero powers. We follow John who uh, is trying to hide his powers I think because only the elite in this school are supposed to have superpowers but John just wants to be an ordinary person and hides his powers from everyone else. So yeah thank you so much again Tracy for sending me it. Down to the last two stacks. This stack will be number one. This stack will be number two. <laughs> Which stack are we gonna go with? Two. Which is this stack. So we just literally went one two three. We went the... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we literally just went in order there, to be honest. I was, you know, initially gonna save this stack for last because it's all manga. Let's just do it. So firstly here I have Sunbringer by Hannah Kane. This was a Waterstones pre-order. Again, very, very beautiful. This is a sequel to God Killer, which I have not yet read. I apologize. I wonder if this is a duology. If anyone knows, let me know. But there is war, of course. I'm assuming from the first book's title, God Killer, the main character kills gods or something like that. I don't quite know, but I genuinely freaking love this cover so much. I love the cover of the first one too. <gasps> there are some people who have read this and liked it, so I'm positive I will read and enjoy too. Next, I have Voyage of the Dam by Francis White. This one is Illumicrate, and again, very excited to read it. I love anything to do with ships and the ocean. This one follows an expedition to the Sacred Goddess's Mountain and it's gonna be a 12 day kind of adventure. And aboard this ship are 12 people who are blessed with certain magical gifts. There is a murder that happens on this ship too, so it turns into a bit of a murder mystery, which I'm looking forward to. I think it looks awesome. It's very thick though. So uh, the size is intimidating me a little bit, but genuinely another gorgeous, gorgeous book. Next I have a couple of books I got from The Broken Binding. This is the next series that they're doing. So I'm still waiting for the third book, which I think will be March. March's Broken Binding. So this was January and February, Northern Wrath and Shackled Fates. These are the first two books in the Hangar trilogy by Thild Cold Holt. I think. So these look like very interesting adult fantasy books and it looks like the trilogy will end up 
showing this tree on the stenciled edges. This one uh, has the ties to Midgard kind of crumbling and we follow a set of characters who are trying to restore the connection with Midgard. So it does weave in Norse mythology and yeah, lots of Norse stuff in this book haul. I did have my pre-order of the Waterstones edition of the Atlas Complex by Olivia Blake, which has this like very wavy uh, sword. <laughs> I think this is the third book in a trilogy, the Atlas Six being the first one, and then there's another one with the Atlas something, and then I think this is the third one. <laughs> I don't know if you can maybe read them as standalones or if it is an actual trilogy, but it has something to do with a magical library and I'm all about magical library stories. So I still haven't yet read an Olivia Blake book yet, but I keep reordering the beautiful Waterstones editions of them because I don't want to miss out and I don't want to kick myself for not getting them. So one of these days I will do an Olivia Blake reading vlog. You just watch. My Waterstones pre-order of Fairbound came too, and I'm actually going to be reading this this week. Very, very excited because I've heard great things about it. And I have read from this author before, Sarah El Arifi. I've read The Final Strife and I really liked it. And I've heard nothing but great things about Feybound. This one follows Yiran and her sister who are forced into exile and have to live in a really dangerous wilderness. And in this wilderness, they encounter the Fey Court. Very, very intrigued by it. But yeah, I'm gonna be reading this this week. So yeah, I'm so excited. Next I did also have another pre-order, The Beholders by Hester Musson. Honestly, whenever Waterstones do double points, I just do a whole lot of pre-orders and then forget what I pre-ordered. But this one is one of them. Very gorgeous, again, with the edges and it's signed by the author. And I'm gonna move that so you can see me better and the book better, of course, because it's all about the books. <laughs> this one is actually set in 1878, so it's a little bit historical, but it's also a bit of a ghost story, I think, too, because there is a young boy who went missing, but his body is found in the River Thames. And then four months later, we follow Harriet, who is a maid at Flinton Hall, I think it's called, and things get a little bit scary, and I think there are like certain mysteries and ties to that boy from the start of the book and it sounds pretty creepy. And I freaking love the cover, oh God. I know I'm so superficial, I'm sorry. This happens every book haul. Another pre-order is The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. I don't know if this is a sequel to The Maid or if maybe it's just similar because this is the author's vibe. So maybe this is like a standalone. I actually don't quite know. But there is a hotel. It might be the same one as the first book, but a famous writer drops dead very unexpectedly. And that is the murder mystery of this book. So I'm really into my murder mysteries and I love trying to solve them myself sometimes. So I'm very excited that this one could be another one that potentially is a good one to solve. It is a whodunit and I love me a whodunit. So I had to pre-order this one, just normal blue sprayed edges, nothing too fancy. One I picked up on a whim when I was in Waterstones too, when I had points on my card, is Till Death Do Us Bored by Rose Black. And I believe this is about a bard, like it's, it's gay. It is gay. Yeah, there's a guy called Logan and he is a warrior. It sounds a little bit Legends and Lotties a little bit because Logan ends up retiring from his, you know, uh, warrior kind of life and he decides to settle down with his bard husband, Pi. But this sounds like it has like an actual plot, whereas Legends and Lotties doesn't really because Logan's husband, Pi, ends up going missing and he has to like go on an adventure to find him. I haven't actually seen anyone talk about this online, I don't think. So if anyone has read it, please let me know. Cause this sounds like so good. I might read it for LGBTQ plus history month. I also picked up House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. I do have a reading vlog of reading the entire Crescent City series where I read this, I did not love it. In fact, I didn't even really like it all that much. It's very disappointing. And yeah, I have a whole vlog talking about this. It is set in uh, Crescent City. It's like a bit of like an urban fantasy. There are fae, there are angels, there are just this, that, and the other. We follow Bryce and she is half human, half fae. And Bryce is just the most perfect person in the world. Oh, one that I'm actually reading like right now. I am reading this right now is Everyone on This Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. This one is so highly anticipated because I loved, it was actually my favorite book of 2023. Everyone in my family has killed someone by the same author. And it is like a whodunit murder mystery kind of thing. And this one is apparently set on a train. <laughs> I know nothing else about it, but I am reading this before Feybound. I'm reading this and Feybound this week. And honestly, my expectations for this are maybe a little bit too high. So maybe I should lower them a little bit so that I'm not disappointed by it. But I have every faith that this is gonna be good. And then the last one in that stack is The Will of the Many by James Islington. And this one I picked up because my friend Jade recently read it and is instantly obsessed. And it was her reaction to reading this 
that really made me want to pick it up too. I know a lot of people have been loving this and it was pretty popular in 2023, but I didn't really pay any attention to any of that. But as soon as Jade loved it, I thought, you know what? I want to pick it up too. All I know is that this is set in Catatan Academy might be the wrong pronunciation. And there is some kind of mystery unfolding. It is a fantasy series and it is apparently the first book in the hierarchy series. So that's all I know, that's all I want to know. And I will be reading this relatively soon-ish for a video. Yay. Okay, so the last stack, let's do it. Oh my god, okay, right, so we're doing stack number one. This is all manga, so if manga is not really your thing, then if you're leaving now, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already before you go. That would be amazing. Also leave all the comments down below of like anything that you're excited about, anything you've read that I should prioritize. Let me know down below. So yeah, this is all gonna be manga now. So if it's not really your thing, bye. I'm sorry to say you go, but bye. But if it is your thing, let's do it. So firstly, I have The Apothecary Diaries Volume 1. This one has been recommended non-stop on my channel like the last like couple of months. So this one does follow a young woman who was trained in herbal medicine and I think she has an apothecary of her own and she ends up having to brew potions while solving mysteries apparently. <laughs> oh next one I picked up is Black Knight Parade because I was trying to look for some kind of Christmassy manga and I just couldn't really find any but then this one did come up it's called Black Knight Parade. Sounds a little bit Krampus-esque in a way. There is a normal Santa who dresses in red and white and you know rewards good children but there is also a Santa Claus who is dressed all in black who punishes people. But we follow Hino, who ends up running into this Santa Claus. He is older. I think this Santa Claus just punishes everyone. And Hino is like spirited away by this uh, dark Santa to the Arctic, where he is forced to work for this like big Christmas operation. So I don't know if this is actually like wholesome, if it's scary or what, because it's kind of a little conflicting. But once I read it, I will let you know. I did pick up four more volumes of Ascendance of a Bookworm. This is all of the rest of part one that I needed. Ascendance of a Bookworm is split into parts. In part one has seven volumes. So now I have all of part one. So now I can just binge read Ascendance of a Bookworm. This one follows a woman who gets killed by her books. They fall on top of her and they crush her to death. But then she wakes up in a sort of alternate universe where she is a young girl in a world where paper is very scarce and books just aren't really a thing. And she is that much of a bookworm that she is desperate to read a book, that she will do anything to read a book. And it is one of my favorite new mangas that I have read recently. It is originally a light novel and I wanna be reading the light novels too at some point. But yeah, I, I love this series so much. Speaking of light novels, I do have the Spy Family Family Portrait light novel. Very excited to read this one too. I just did a Spy Family reading vlog reading the first 13 volumes of Spy Family. All spoiler filled, so if you've read Spy Family or if you don't intend on reading Spy Family and you just want to know my thoughts, then that video I will also link down below. But I did not read the light novel for this because I do plan on doing a light novel reading vlog at some point and I think this could be really, really cool. I picked up volume 7, 8, 9 and 10 of Chainsaw Man in the 3 for 2 at Forbidden Planet. I am going to try and read the first 11 volumes of Chainsaw Man in... April, which is all of part one of the series. So I wanted to do that as my whole manga all in one editions that I've been doing recently. And Chainsaw Man is about Denji who can transform his limbs into chainsaws. And I quite like the first volume. I have the second volume of Oshinoko and this one I cannot wait to read because the first volume was so bizarre in such a very intriguing and entertaining way. We have this huge star, this idol, come to a hospital, she's pregnant and she's there in secret. She has a doctor who ends up getting murdered and this murder doctor gets reincarnated as this pop idol's baby. And it's so bizarre, but that's not all that happens, but that's all I'm gonna say, because I don't want to spoil it for you. And I'm just so intrigued. I am so intrigued. So picked up volume two. Also picked up volume two of Martial Magic and Muscles because the first volume made me laugh so, so much. It was one of the funniest mangas I've ever read. It's about a guy who goes to a wizard school, but he doesn't have magic. So it's like, it, it's weird. It's so weird, so funny. Never laughed so much before for a manga. Next, I also have Kaiju number eight, volume one. This one was another recommendation when I did my 24 manga in 24 hours video. A lot of people said I should try the series out. This one is set in a world where uh, there are these evil monsters and they attack Japan. And there is a, a Japanese defense 
force that try and work against these deadly monsters. And I believe we follow Kafka, who is the cleanup person. Like he's the one who cleans up all of the dead monsters and the corpses and stuff. But he's always dreamed of being somebody who works for that Japan Defense Force. So I think this follows like his journey into that. I also picked up volume two of Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm trying to read more series because I read a whole lot of volume ones and then never really continue after that because I end up just getting like so distracted by other things. So I'm making a conscious effort to actually, you know, continue series. And Jujutsu Kaisen is one that's always recommended to me. And Bella from Throne of Pages loves the series as well as the next one I'm going to talk about. And I trust Bella's opinion, okay? Next I have volume two of Demon Slayer. And this is another one like Jujutsu Kaisen that I'm trying to just continue. My ass is killing me from standing up. My ass, my back, everything. Like, ow. I read volume one for my 30 manga and 30 days video last year and really enjoyed it. And I also watched the first anime episode and really enjoyed that too. So this is definitely another series that I'm really interested in, in pursuing and continuing. So I don't know if maybe I should do a vlog reading all of that in one go. I also picked up volume two of Alice in Borderlands. See? Loads of volume twos here. Alice in Borderland, I love the first volume. I read that for 24 manga in 24 hours. And I love the premise of them being transported into this game where they have to sort of fight for their lives. And every time they complete a game, which is like life or death, they redeem more days that they can be alive. And so they have to keep entering these really dangerous games in order to get more days to live kind of thing. And I'm very excited to read more. I really want to watch the Netflix live action adaptation of it, but I want to read the manga first. So yeah, picked a volume two. Also picked a volume two of Witch Hat Atelier Kitchen. I'm gonna read all of Witch Hat Atelier in March and I'm very excited to do so. This one is like the cozy slice of life spin-off series where it's just all to do with cooking. And it's set in the Witch Hat Atelier world. So there's like little bits of magic. I have no idea what else because I'm gonna be reading it all this month. I picked up Sora and the House of Monsters on a whim when I was in either Forbidden Planet or Traveling Man a couple of weeks back. And I just absolutely loved the way that this looks. It looks so cool. This one follows uh, Sora who when she's younger is trained to fight monsters but when she's old enough to actually use her blade monsters and humans have entered a peace treaty so she can't exactly go out and slay monsters because there's peace in the land now. They, they've agreed to to be peaceful. And now Sora is trying to change her whole reason for life by I think helping with a house that looks after monsters. I did pick up the first six volumes of Cherry Magic. 30 years of virginity can make you a wizard. Don't be fooled by the title, it is actually so wholesome. One of the best romances that I've read. It is male male about a guy who turns 30 and he develops the power of telepathy because he's still a virgin and he overhears the thoughts of one of his co-workers, one of his hot co-workers who actually has a crush on him. It's so cute and adorable and I love it so much. I read the first five volumes, I did a whole reading vlog for it, but I haven't read volume six yet, which is the newest volume that I picked up. There are 10 volumes so far, I think, that's out in English. So I am so excited to read this. I'll probably read it at some point today, to be honest. I do have reading sprints later on Patreon. I could read it during then. Okay, three more to go, three more to go. I picked up the third volume of Vinland Saga, book three. This one I'm so excited to read, but I probably won't read for a little while. So I'm trying to collect the volumes so that when I do read them all, I've got them all. But this one is pretty historical. It is to do with Viking and it's been a little while since I read book one so I'll start from the beginning but I really enjoyed book one I thought it was awesome but yeah I can't really remember too much about the plot now <laughs> I remember there was a revenge plot in there I also picked up the fifth color edition of Parasite there are going to be eight full color editions and I now have five of the eight of them and I love the fact that all of the spines say Parasite so I can't wait for all of them to be out so I can have them on my shelves but this is a sci-fi horror where there is an alien invasion and they can inhabit the body. And the main character, an alien, ends up living in his arm. So it's it sounds weird. I know Gabby read the first volume of it recently and thought it was interesting. So I'm excited. And then finally, I did pick up three volumes of Full Metal Alchemist. This is volume seven, eight, and nine of the full metal editions. And I'm so excited to collect them all. I need to collect them all relatively soon because I believe... I'm reading all of Full Metal Alchemist in June or July or something. I wanna read all of them this year. I'm so excited. This actually was the most recommended 
manga series to me when I did my manga tournament nearly two years ago. So it's been like nearly two years since I said I would actually read this. And now that I'm in my manga era, I feel like now is the right time. And I have read the first volume, I enjoyed it, but I can't really remember too much of the plot. I remember there was brothers, the two main characters are brothers, and one of them is a suit of armor. Like his soul is just like inside the suit of armor kind of thing. And the other main guy has a lot of injuries, essentially. So that is my book haul from January and February and the first week of March. I know, I really do need to calm down. And I don't think there are that many more pre-orders coming. So hopefully the next couple of months will be relatively quiet on the book haul front. But well, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below. Let me know what you think of any of the books in this video. Anything you're more excited for me to read. Anything that you haven't heard of before and you're now excited to read because of this video. Let me know everything in the comments. And I give a huge thank you to my patrons and my channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or my channel membership then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.